Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Check it out, it's the Bugs 2. We're gonna be doing a full review on this today. This is the GPS MJX, actually RC's first GPS 1080p camera quad, kind of competing with something like the Hubson H501A, their Wi-Fi quad. So we'll see how it is. Is it gonna be any good? Is MJX, do they have a killer here or what? So we're gonna do a full review, unbox, inspection, setup, on this guy and also going to be giving away a second version. This is the non um, FPV version. And this is a white one I have here. I have an extra one, so I don't need this one. So I'm gonna be giving this away to you guys. So stay tuned for that giveaway coming up in the very near future in my video. So you're gonna to have to subscribe and do a couple of things to qualify for that giveaway. So don't miss that one. So let's go ahead and get into this guy and start the review. All right, cool. So the first thing we can see on the box is all the specifications. It's brushless, it's got GPS. It's saying it can go up to one kilometer of distance stock. Of course, um, GPS quadcopters do have one key return to home that really usually works. Um, this is not a toy. This is more of a hobby grade quadcopter since it has all these advanced functions. The FPV, keep in mind, it is 5.8 gigahertz. It's saying right here on the box. So you have to make sure the device you're using has a 5.8 gigahertz capable Wi-Fi. I'm gonna be using the LG G6 phone for this flight test, and this does have 5.8 gigahertz capability. So probably some of the other phones that only have 2.4 Wi-Fi aren't gonna work with this one. Since this is the um, 5.8 gigahertz Wi-Fi FPV version, it looks like it comes in black or red. There's another picture on the other side of the red version. I have the black version here. And let's go ahead and get right in to the box. Cool, so nothing else in the box. We do have our, looks like our instruction manual on top with a few stickers. And let's open this bad boy up. Cool, so there's the quadcopter. Looks like they are making sure they're doing some detailed protection here so the top doesn't get scratched. Propellers and everything are already mounted up. Let's pull everything out of the box here. The controller just kind of fell out of the bottom of the box there on the table. Looks like this is our battery. We've got some tools and extra parts here. Looks like our FPV mount up for our phone and a charger. Turning over the box, we have an extra set of propellers. All right, cool guys, so here's everything in the box. Let's first just take a look at the star of the show, the Bugs 2. Get this guy in focus. And you can see how they're going with the Bugs look with the eyes on the front. And this one is like a really shiny finish. It's a hard plastic. The plastic feels like it can flex a little bit. Let's take a look at the camera. So it's got this little, little lens protector here. Let's take that off. And this is looking like a pretty good 1080p camera from just the look of it. It's got a, like a Nice little wide angle lens there. Since this is an FPV version of this quad, um, it's always nice to have a little bit of a wide angle lens so you can see your surroundings while you're flying. But a very nice and black, sleek quadcopter. Here's the brushless motors, if I can zoom in and focus here. And here's the motor cap. So these things are awesome. The bugs are all coming with these guys. And it's just basically um, a motor screw that, a thumb screw with some grip on it. And then they give you that little silicone washer that you need to put on in order to hold the propellers on really good. So nice and easy, they're making it easy to change your propellers. And these guys are looking like a six inch propeller at maybe around like a 40 to 45 degree bite there. Tinted plastic light cups on the bottom and they're also landing gear. So I've got this rubber soft on the very bottom of the light cups. And in there is gonna be the lights to show orientation when you're flying. So a little bit of a better view from the top. You can see that shine really nice and sleek. There's that Bugs logo. And the GPS antenna is gonna be somewhere up here. In the back, this is where we're gonna be uh, plugging in the battery. So a little micro mini XT30 connector. That's like the mini version of the XT60 connector. And that's where this battery goes. And speaking of the battery, let's see if we can get some specs on it here. So the battery is a 7.4 volt, 1800 milliamp hour, 25C LiPo which just has a balance tucked away in here. 
and there's our XT30 connector. So kind of a proprietary casing around the battery, but it's not a proprietary battery connection. And this is just gonna slide right in like that. And let's see if how easily it kind of plugs in. There we go. It seems like right when you plug it in, it's going to go ahead and power up. And that's a good uh, indication there, view of our light cup. So they're actually all blinking orange right now. So hopefully that color changes in flight. So to pull the battery out, we've got a pressure tab here and on the top and we're squeezing both and just pulling this all the way out. To charge that battery up on that balance port, it's just a very simple uh, balance charger here. We can see that does have a balance port here and then it's just, this looks like the US version, but it looks like whatever country you order from, um, you can have this slide lock for different power adapters. And again, the bag of uh, extra set of four propellers. So that's great. I love it when quad manufacturers give you a whole new extra set because we all know that um, this is mainly for you know a lower budget quad for kind of beginners and stuff that want a GPS quad as their first quad with some FPV functionality. And you know they might be crashing. So it, it is really important, I think, for manufacturers to at least give you one set of extra propellers. And MJX is really good at doing that. Here's the tool bag. So it looks like a, a little thumb screw tool. So in case you get those too tight, it's just a clamp to help you take those thumb screws off. An extra set of those little silicone washers that go underneath thumb screws on top of the propellers and a little Phillips cross screwdriver there. And here's the controller. So the controller is wrapped up in its own little plastic bag and we have altitude hold. We can see that the left throttle is sprung. So, you know, throttle up and down, yaw, pitch, roll. And if your hands are all the way off the controller, these GPS quads are great because, because they'll just sit there in the sky using the barometer for height. Um, elevation lock and also the GPS for lateral lock in the air. So you can have your hands off the sticks and that thing will just hover there. Anyway, we'll go over the controller in just a second. The last thing in the box here is the little Wi-Fi FPV mount for your phone. So MJX always has this little ball joint, really nice and easy. You just kind of click the ball in there and you're ready to go. You just push this over the antenna and there's a spring loaded little gadget here that locks it in so you can take it off and on. Okay, and the way this mounts up is just get the MJX writing on the right way up. And you wanna have the larger portion of the square facing down and the smaller one facing upwards. And that's just gonna slide right over the antenna mount and should click in. You hear that little click. You wanna take it off, just pull this thing out and give this a good pull and that comes right off. You can see that little notch on the back there. All right, so here's the manual, and let's see what the controls do on the controller. I'm seeing some buttons here on the front. GPS mode off and on. This looks like a return to home. You can see that H there. Taking pictures, um, going ahead and arming the motors or locking the motors, and then launching up and down, so very simple. So here's probably the most important part of the manual to know how to be in, what, uh, how to be in GPS mode and what these buttons do, the trim buttons below the um, sticks. So to the left is going to be gesture mode, that little button pushing it to the left. I'm not sure why they call it gesture mode, but it should be called um, altitude hold only mode because it takes off the GPS. So the craft will go ahead and wander if you have that off. And then switching that to the right will be in the locked GPS mode where you can take your hands off the sticks and it will just stay there. And then the button to the right, um, if you have it to the right side, that's gonna be headless mode and to the left is going to be um, regular orientation mode. Would be nice to have those labels on there. All right, so before we get out there and fly, let's go ahead and link up the phone to the app and see what that all looks like. And then we'll get out there and do some flying. Okay guys, so um, really important to know if you go into the Android app store and you have Android, you're not gonna find this Bugs Go application. You need to go to um, mjx.net and make sure you go to their website. Coincidentally, it's not right here on the Wi-Fi, Bugs2 Wi-Fi page, you would think it's on here somewhere, but this is just instructions on what to do. So unfortunately you have to, it's kind of hidden in here, so you actually have to go to accessory on their webpage and then scroll down. And then you have to get to help center and then you have a download link there. So you hit, click on download and there we go. So you're gonna see download, but it's not the instructions, it's not the catalog, it's the application. So then you have to go into learn more 
for the application. And there is the BugsGo APK, which you can download to your Android device. So a little bit, a lot of loopholes just to get this app. So they definitely should at least put it on the main page of the BugsGo of the bugs to um, Wi-Fi, that's for sure. Okay, so it doesn't say anything about being able to control it strictly from your phone without connecting the controller. But just for demonstration purposes, I'm just gonna go ahead and power on the craft here and link it directly to the phone. I'm not gonna turn on the controller right now. Just to show you the interface and see how everything works. So the way we do this is we turn on the craft first and that's gonna push out the Wi-Fi signal for us to link our FPV to and the app to. And so we wanna go into our um, wireless, F wireless settings on our phone. And we're looking for something called the bugs. So that should be popping up there. And there it is, so it just popped up bugs MJX and we got some letters and numbers there. So I'm gonna click on it and let's see if it auto connects. So there's no password or anything, it just auto connects and we get that little warning from Android. And so all we should need to do now is click on the Bugs Go app we downloaded. And keep in mind that um, since we are installing the APK from not the Android store, it might say you have to check install from untrusted sources in your Android settings. So keep that in mind if you need to do that. Anyways, here we are in the Bugs Go app and we're pressing go and let's see what happens. Cool. So there's our immediate um, FPV Wi-Fi here. So we're seeing everything. And I don't see any control sticks on the screen. And all that does is hide the top um, functions up on the bar there. So we can't control it from here, so that's good to know. We have to have be using the controller. So it's not like other Wi-Fi apps where you can control it from the phone as well. So let's just see what the, um, since we have it on the counter here, let's see what the, latency is so you're getting quite a bit of latency which is normal kind of for um, wi-fi fpv it does look like it's a really nice and clear video though doesn't it so don't try to fly any close proximity with this one or else you're going to be crashing into things keep it up and away from objects so you have time to react because you do have about a half a second of latency on this Wi-Fi. One thing I think I forgot to mention is where the micro SDR, SD card goes or TF card, and there it is right in the side. They don't give you one in the box, but you're gonna need to have your own micro SD or TF card. Um, it's also called, and plug it in right here. So I'm probably gonna be using like a 16 gigabyte card in there. And one thing the instructions did note that you guys should know is if you don't have the card in, it's gonna record your pictures and videos to your phone in the app directory. If you do have an S micro SD card in here and you are taking those photos and pictures, it will go ahead and record them directly into that SD card, probably in a higher quality. Anyway, enough on the bench with this guy. Let's go ahead and charge everything up, get out there, do our flight test and our pros and cons. Cool, let's go fly. Okay guys, so it's time for the flight test of the Bugs 2 and you got the battery charged here and you got the charged, freshly charged batteries in the controller, my phone's charged. So I'm gonna be, you can hear it's like super windy right now. Let me grab the um, wind gauge here and just show you exactly how windy it is. I think we're getting up to about 10 miles per hour coming from right from that direction. So it's actually up to 12 right now. So like right when I got here, it always, the wind always picks up right when I get here for some reason. I guess I get here at the wrong time, but hopefully it kind of dies down. So we're right around 10 right now, between five and 10. You can see there on the, the wind gauge. This is a great little wind gauge. I'll have the link in the description if you guys want to check this out. Okay, so just so you guys know, um, what you need to do with this guy to initially bind to the craft. I've had this experience before with some of the bug stuff. And when you boot the bugs up, you first plug it in. And before you turn on your controller, hold in the red button when you turn the controller on and then it'll bind to the craft. I was having a little bit of difficulty. Okay, cool. So we should be kind of um, connected and everything should be good to go. And now we're waiting for satellites. And what you want to do with this thing is you've got to first do like a compass calibration. So you kind of rotate it a few times. Um, the instructions are a little vague on this, but it says rotate it this way first. 
and then put it face down and you want to rotate it like this until we're seeing the um, you see how the green lights were blinking and now they're on solid green and red in the front so green in the back red in the front lights and we should be good to go and as soon as we did that now we can see on the controller I don't know if you guys can see this in the camera but there's 16 satellites so we should be a-okay ready to go uh, I am recording the screen on here let's go ahead and take a picture it should be saving that to the card on the craft since we have a card in there so I'll have that pop up on the screen so you guys can see it and I'm also going to be starting the video now so starting the record by just pressing that and you can see it says record start so we want to make sure our switches are right is basically on so this is GPS mode is on we want to have headless mode off right now unless you're beginning and you want that and then this would arm our motors up here on top this is return to home and that's manually starting and stopping videos and cameras. I think I'm just gonna be pressing on the app for this flight. And then lift off is here when we go ahead and arm the, odor, the motors. So 16 satellites, we should be good to go. So I could either pull both sticks down into arm or just press the lock button. So I'm just gonna press the lock button one time. <clears throat> and you can see the, um, the motors spun up. And now we're ready to go, so we should be able to either push up on the left stick or just press this once and it will hover to a certain height. Now keep in mind it's super windy, this is not ideal conditions. It's like 10 miles per hour, which isn't super windy, but that's pretty darn windy. You can see my shadow of my shorts and my shirt just blasting in the wind there. So I'm going to press the launch, see what it does. So I'm not going to be touching the controller and it's going to try to fight that wind. If anything, this will be a good review to show you how good it is at fighting wind. So the barometer is going to be a little bit crazy right now because the wind's so hard. You can see it kind of fluctuating up and down. So again, not super ideal conditions, but there's the video. I'll have the video up on the screen and also the phone up on the screen on the other side. So you can kind of see what's going on. It is kind of dropping a little bit. Um, and it says TF on the left there, you can see on the recorded screen of the phone. And it's showing us how long we are recording the video for. And then up on the top right, it has our wireless signal to the craft. Um, keep in mind, that's not our controller signal. Controller signal's down here, it has these five bars here. So that's just the FPV 5.8 gigahertz Wi-Fi signal up on the top. All right, cool, so let's start doing some functions here. So I've just been letting it sit in GPS and we'll do a return to home and see how close it lands to that H, even in the wind. Pushing up a little bit. Let's see how it is with um, like a punch test. It's doing a really good job actually at fighting this wind. But it is so crazy. So we'll come down. And I'm just gonna do a full punch up so you guys can see how fast it is. So full punch right now. Okay. So not too quick, you know, a few feet per second. And then uh, it's probably way windier up there, but it is holding itself. Video's up on the screen there. Let's see if I can take a couple of snapshots while the video's recording. I'll have those come up on the screen. It says okay, so hopefully those are taking and I'll have those pop up. Let me turn here and get one of um, the countryside. That's a little prettier there. So, taking a photo. Wow, the camera color looks really good, actually. Another photo. Okay, so I'll have those coming up so you can see them with the video. Full throttle down. And that's our full descent speed. Looks about the same as coming up, and I just let off the throttle. And it's trying to stabilize itself. The wind is pushing it down a little bit. You can see it going down there. So that's just the barometer being influenced by this crazy wind. And we're also gonna be keeping track of the flight time. I'll definitely have that pop up when we're all done, just so you guys know exactly how long this flew on the first charge of the battery. So I'm gonna bring it down to eye level and let's do a little bit of a yaw rotation. So full yaw to the left. A Little bit of wander there, it's trying to keep its bearing and yawing and everything. So that's the speed of the yaw. Cool, yeah. Kind of a neat, sleek looking craft. It reminds me a lot of the Hubson H51S quads. Very similar. There's our front view. 
Whoa, I want to get my face chopped off. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Cool, so, so far so good. Let's try to see what our speeds are like. So full throttle forward right now. Okay, so be careful in this kind of wind because you might, uh, it might get, get it like driven down. That's full throttle forward. Now the wind's to my back, it's front. It's still maintaining pretty good. Not bad at all, that's like a full yaw and pitch forward. Pretty good. Full throttle down. Let's see what our roll is like. Yeah, about the same. So the same roll compared to the pitch in the forward and back. It is really trying to fight that wind. It did a pretty good job, actually. Hands off and it's just sticking there in the air. Moving around a few feet, but that's reasonable for how windy it is. Cool, so let's see what else we can do. Let's try a headless. So I'm gonna stand right here where we launched from. I think it's gonna do headless probably from this point. And this direction, I launched with the H right in the middle of that H line, in this direction there. So probably gonna wanna do headless this way. So you see the switch here, I'm gonna switch it to the right. Now we should be in headless mode. So any direction I yaw the craft, if I push forward, yeah, it's working good. I'm turning it while I'm pushing forward. And it's flying directly out for me. Let's try again. Let's spin the head and pull back. And let's see how accurate it is. Spinning, pulling back. Okay, a little bit off there. So look at that. So now it's coming back that way. So that was a little strange. It went out that way, but now it's coming back that way. So um, may have to readjust a little bit. Okay, so bummer, I had to land it real quick because my battery in my hat cam died. Sorry about that, guys. But I'm going to deduct about a minute from flight time. It just took another minute for me to change that battery. So I'll go ahead and relaunch again. Right in the middle of this H. Let's try to arm the motors in the other way um, by just holding both sticks down into the middle. Yeah, so you can arm them that way too if you want. And let's just try to take off manually. We know the auto takeoff works. Pushing up. Cool, so you can take off that way too if you want. Works great. And what were we doing? We were doing headless, and it seemed to work okay, but not really that well, as, not as well as I thought it would. Let's try that again. So going into headless, pushing to the right-hand side, rotating and pulling back. So it's not as exact as maybe some other quads, and that could be just because of maybe GPS accuracy and stuff like that. See how now it's coming back a little bit that way, so. Not entirely super precise in the headless, but it will give you a basic headless mode. Cool, so what else can we, can, can we do? Um, you wanna test the range? Let's test the range. I have no idea what my battery power is. RX shows three little battery dots there on the controller screen. I don't have any information on the, um, on the phone screen, as you can see. So I'm just gonna try to fly way out that way. I'm gonna try to go up here pretty high. And again, I'll have this recording so you guys can see it. And let's just see how far we can get. Might as well do a range test. So I'm gonna try to keep it up and fly that way. Full throttle up and the videos, I still have FPV on the video. Wow, that's pretty far. Okay, so did you hear that? I heard some beeping. And let's see what it does. That's the low signal beep. Oh, that's cool. And it's showing us on the controller the distance. You see that? So 180, 209. It shows us our height is 44 feet. So I'm way the heck over here across the park and that's about it for the video starting to chop out at 200 and i guess that's 270 feet or meters i would imagine maybe feet i don't think that's meters so about um in this residential area about just around 300 feet probably and then it's going to cut out 
So let's try to return to home. Let's try this out. You can see it's over there. Let me turn the head. The video's getting a little choppy, but I want to try to get some pictures of the views up here. So at this distance, video to the phone is choppy. I'm sure the video on the craft is going to be nice and, um, you know, clear and fluid. So I'm taking a photo right there. Cool. Let's take another photo of the West Maya Mountains right in the sun if we can. Yeah, FPV's totally dropping out. Let's hit a return to home. So I just pressed it there, the return to home on the H. And let's see if we can get back and connect because it looks like we lost connection with the craft. Way over there. So let's see what happens. I sure do hope it comes back. I don't really see it. So you know what? If all else... Oh, there it is. Okay, it's right above me. <laughs> it came back quick, man. It hasn't reconnected, unfortunately, to the, the phone. So I'm just waiting for some kind of connection. Let's see if it goes ahead and lands. I do at least, even though the phone is disconnected, I do at least, you can see here on the controller, I've got my distance, which is zero because it's right above us. And I've got our height. So that's great. At least if all else fails, you still have some information on the controller with its telemetry. And it is saying home, the H there. So it's saying it's in return to home. So that's perfect. Let's see how close it is. I'm not gonna touch the controller since I launched. I mean, since I hit return home, and let's see how close it is to its launch point, even in this wind. Okay. So that's not too bad for a really cheap GPS quad like this. You can see that it is, I wanna say one, two, about three and a half feet away, maybe four feet away from the H. And you could see that it was, uh, I think it was returning um, with its face towards us when it returned home. I'll definitely have that video up there so you can see. But check this out. So the app is not reconnecting. So I guess what I'm gonna do is uh, try to stop the video. Hopefully that recorded, but I have no FPV, it's locked up. So I'm gonna press back and press again to exit. Go back into go. And I guess that beeping is meaning low battery. So that's good. I like it. You know what we didn't try? We didn't try altitude hold with no GPS. So let's try it real quick before the battery dies. And okay, cool. So I went back into the app and it looks like we do have our FPV. I'm gonna hit record again. And there we go. So hopefully that's recording. I'll have that up again. So unlocking the motors with a button armed cool still beeping on the tx to let us know we're low battery i only have two bars there but let's just keep going okay so it disarmed let's try arm again lift off with the auto lift off button and what i wanted to do is demonstrate the altitude hold only excuse me with no gps so if we switch this left button by the throttle to the left, this like trim looking button, it should completely take off GPS and it will just get pushed away by the wind. It should still try to maintain its height. So let's try it. So flicking the switch to the left now. Yep. So look at that. So it's drifting with the wind. Looks like we can still fly it. And this would be kind of a sport mode without GPS. You're gonna get be able to go faster because it's not limited by its GPS designated speed in the flight controller. So if you don't need that, you know, GPS and you want to get somewhere quick, uh, go ahead and switch into altitude hold. But perfect demonstration. Let me get it out here a bit. Let the wind kind of blow it back towards us. And then I'm going to lock this button back in. And you're going to see how it locks. So let's go over here a little bit so it blows back towards us right there okay three two one switching in a gps cool so i just switched 
Let's see if it stabilizes. Good. Awesome. Okay, so everything seems to be working as advertised perfectly. Is it coming down? Let's see. I want to see what happens uh, when it tries to land. Let's see if we go out that way again on low battery. If it'll try to come back or something like automatic return to home. Or if it'll just hover out there. Just try to go like right there. So it's just hovering out there. This one uh, supposedly will try to come home when it's low power, but maybe I'm just not far enough away. I just don't want it to land on anybody, so I don't want to try that. So what we'll do is we'll just stick around here. Maybe we'll try that feature in another video, letting off the stick. And that's how much it takes to stabilize when there's this much wind, 10 miles per hour coming from that direction. Cool. This thing's got some good flight time, man. I'm wondering if it's going to compete with the Hubson H501S for that 20 minutes. Um, this, of course, this only has a 1800 milliamp hour battery, but the Hubsons have a 27. So I doubt it's gonna reach 20 minutes, but who knows? I'm just gonna keep going. And let's let's get, go ahead and get up there and do a little bit more video way up high. I know we're almost dead, but I like to see what happens, you know, when the battery is about to die. So I'll have this video up. You can see how it's fighting the wind. Okay, now we're having long beeps. And I have a return to home. So it's automatically coming home. It basically is doing this automatically. I can see my height. My height is actually staying there. So if we push it forward. Oh, it's still able to go forward. Let's see what it does. Looks like it's coming down really slow. Yeah, so it's doing like a really slow landing. So that's kind of its uh, low voltage landing. And what we'll do is we'll see if it lets us push up on low voltage. Definitely not recommended at all to do this with your quad. <laughs> but I just want to know what this thing does. So it's kind of in a forced landing and I'm going to push up throttle. Oh, good. So if you're coming home and you're far away, you have the ability to push up before you hit something and really try to get home, probably at the expense of the battery life. You know, you're gonna possibly damage your battery. Full throttle up, oh, now it's not letting me go up anymore. Now I'm pulling down and good, just shut off the propellers. Okay, stop recording on the app. Great, so what an awesome flight. We can hear the beeping because look at that. The RX is just totally blank on the battery. So I better turn this thing off super quick. Make sure your recording has stopped so it saves. And then we'll go ahead and just pull out the battery there. And we can hear that the disconnect beep is really fast. Well, cool guys, what a great test for the bugs too. Let's go ahead and go through a little pros and cons on this guy and um, let you know what I thought about it. So first of all, I will have the pictures and video up on the screen and you can kind of judge for yourself how good those looked. It looked, I will say, there's no image stabilization on this, but I will say that the clarity looked really good in the FPV screen here in my phone. Um, keep in mind that the FPV in a residential area like this is you're gonna start cutting out at about 300 feet. It's gonna start getting choppy. And that's where I lost the signal. Still had great telemetry on here. So this is a big bonus. This, These numbers here, it tells you the height and distance. I didn't go over this in the house, but it gives you the height, distance, GPS satellites, and then what mode it's in. You can see here we have, um, there was a headless icon, there was a, uh, return to home icon 
there was a video camera icon. I don't don't remember that popping up. And then there's a picture picture icon. I think those will light up if you press these buttons from the controller, but I was doing it all uh, from the app there. So hopefully the video did record, you know, on the craft because they said in the manual that even if you press the buttons here, it'll record on the memory card. But I'm hoping that's that's the way it was because in some quadcopters, if you press it on the app, it only records the screen on the app in the phone. So I'm hoping that I didn't need to press these to make it record onto the internal memory card. Everything else, lighting great. Very similar to like a Hubson quadcopter with these light cups and these rubber feet on the bottom. Uh, there wasn't really any different speeds of flight it, aside from going into altitude hold only mode if we flip the switch to the left which was fine you know you can see how fast it was going in GPS and then it will go faster in altitude hold because it doesn't have any limitation uh, to its flight controller and the GPS signal so keep that in mind but then of course you don't have that locked in GPS safety very quiet this thing was super quiet and again, I will have the flight time pop up on the screen here so you guys can see just how long this lasted. Uh, but it did seem like, I'm, f I'm feeling maybe about 10 to 15 minutes is what it felt like. But I will have that pop up so you can see what that's all about. I really like the easy pr propeller changing with these thumb screws. I like that system. I think they got a good thing going with that. Of course, you're not gonna get that video stabilization because there is no gimbal on here. Um, but from what I could see again, it does have good pictures and video. Pictures, the color was really nice on my phone. So I hope those turned out good and I'll have had those pop up. So probably the only con on this one, um, aside from that no stabilization in the video, was the headless mode was a little bit off. And I'm not sure why. I did calibrate the compass on liftoff. You saw us do that calibration. So I'm not sure what that's all about. The distance for the Wi-Fi, that's reasonable. Around 300 feet, you know, that's for regular Wi-Fi. It's basically using the same kind of Wi-Fi for the FPV as you would like an internet signal. So internet signal is really, you know, limited to around that far anyway in residential areas. And the only other thing to talk about really is the return to home. Uh, the return to home was about three and a half, four feet off, and that's reasonable for a cheap GPS quadcopter like this. So I'm not going to knock it much for that. That's definitely fine. But anyway, guys, I hope you really enjoyed that uh, flight test of the Bugs 2 Wi-Fi FPV edition. Again, remember, I'm going to be giving away the non-FPV edition of this one. So make sure you subscribe, and I'll have a, a designated giveaway video specifically for that so you guys can win it. And don't forget the links to this guy down in the description. Thanks for watching.